Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And today we're going to talk about speed, about going fast, about getting things done more quickly. Over the last couple of years, I've noticed that my Prusa i3 MK3 was really quite a bit faster than all of my other 3D printers. And I have, I don't know, 10, 11 different 3D printers. About a year ago, I added a Monoprice Ultimate 2 3D printer to my stable of printers, and it was also faster. So I assumed the speed difference was all attributable to the idea that the Monoprice Ultimate 2 and the Prusa were direct extruder printers. And therefore, retraction distances were much smaller. And because there was less retraction, prints completed faster. But it didn't seem to account for everything. Recently, I've begun using the Prusa slicer that I originally only used for my Prusa printer with multiple printers. And the prints seem to be a little faster. So I wanted to determine whether this was just my impression, a subjective observation, or actually a fact. So over the last few days, I did some tests. I wanted to determine whether the latest version of Cura was in fact slower than the latest version of Prusa Slicer. Stay tuned and let's learn something together. Now, this video is going to include a surprise because if you watch the beginning of the video, you may reach a conclusion fairly quickly. And let me tell you that conclusion might not be accurate. So you really need to watch the whole video to hear all of the ins and outs of the experience I had in trying to determine if Prusa Slicer was in fact faster than the Cura Slicer. This video is part of a series of well over 150 videos about 3D printing on the Dr. Vax channel here on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you'll be notified as new videos are available. Now, let's look at the components of print speed because there are discrete stages in your print that impact speed, timing, elapsed time. Let's look, take a look at this slide together. So the first thing that happens when you click on the print button is your hot end and your build plate, your build print bed have to heat up. That takes some time. Then you have to, if you have an auto bed leveling system, potentially probe the bed. Finally, most start routines, G-code start routines, print a purge line or a waste line or an index line. It's basically a line of filament printed on the side of the print to get the filament extruding smoothly. Then you're followed with other items that have been added by the slicer. You might be printing a brim, which is an area around the print to help hold it, a skirt, which is just a line around the print, or a raft, which is a surface under the print. Those all add to print time. Finally, you begin actually printing. Now, let's look at the methodology I used to determine the speed of these slicers. I really looked at three independent measurements. The first measurement was the measurement I obtained on my Ender 3 version 2. Now, my Ender 3 version 2 is not running the stock firmware from Ender. It's running Marlin 2.0. I'm doing that because I added a 
auto bed leveling system to the Ender 3 version 2. And on my display, I can see the elapsed time and the estimated total time for the print. So I have the elapsed time from the time the printer started the process. It started processing G-code to the conclusion of the print. The second thing I did is I used this DJI pocket, this dedicated camera to record the actual prints. So I could look at the timestamps in the video, compare them to the times I was seeing on the front of my printer. I also could determine the amount of time it was taking to heat the extruder, the amount of time for bed probing, the amount of time for, let's say, a raft or a skirt, the waistline. I could break all those times down. Now you might ask, why didn't I just use Octoprint with a camera? Well, the reason was I didn't want any other factors impacting my print times. So in all the cases, I printed directly off a SD card inserted into the printer. And the third times available were the times from the slicer itself. And I wanted to compare those to my measured times. Because once I knew how they compared to measured times, I could have a better idea of whether I could use those slicer times accurately in the future. Now, today I'm going to talk about three models that, that I used for timing. The first was actually a model that I designed myself. And we'll look at a close-up of this because I designed it with some very specific characteristics. The first characteristic was I didn't want to take more than an hour to print because I wanted to do this rather quickly. Now, you might accurately observe that the longer the print, the more accurate my potential results would be. And you're right. So let's say that today's video is going to give you an indication of the performance of Cura versus Prusa, but your results will vary depending on a number of factors. We'll see that in a minute. Let's look at this print. So this was produced in Tinkercad. It's a very simple model. The first thing is I wanted a significant flat top surface because I wanted to also look at quality. And as expected, the Prusa print is a bit better. And that's because Prusa has a new feature called a monotonic top layer where it ensures that it prints only in one consistent direction from left to right across the whole print. So the top surface is quite beautiful. In all other regards, the quality of these prints are identical. Uh, they printed the towers very, very well, and both of the prints struggled a bit in exactly the same places with the overhangs. Now, the other characteristics I was interested in were travel times. I wanted a significant amount of travel relative to the amount of material because I thought that travel optimization would impact print times. I wanted the print to require retraction and I wanted to be able to check for stringing. And you'll notice on both these prints, there is zero stringing. Now we'll see in a minute, that's interesting because the retraction settings by default in Prusa and Cura for the Ender 3 line of printers are very different, but neither one had any trouble with stringing. I wanted to have some overhangs and I wanted, as I said, to recognize that movements really are looking at optimizations of the slicer probably more significantly than just printing a big solid uh, where you're really just limited by the mechanics of the 3D printer. So let's look at some results. Now, I tabulated these in a spreadsheet, so I just took pictures of the spreadsheet for these slides. First, Cura. Cura estimated this print would take 49 minutes. In reality, it took 48 minutes and six seconds. Now, that's 48 minutes and six seconds from the time it started printing 
the actual object that did not include warm-up time. It did not include ABL probing. It did not include printing the purge line. From the time it started printing, in this case, printing a skirt. So in fact, Cura estimated a little longer for the print than it actually took by about 2%, 1.87%. With startup time, however, Cura underestimated by about 11%. So in this case, it seems that the startup time, which is a full seven minutes using the start code provided in Cura 4.8, I didn't tweak it at all except for adding a G29 to po probe the bed. Um, there's about a 10% add-on for small prints. Now that seven minutes will be the same whether you're printing for an hour or you're printing for 20 hours. So for long prints, startup time really doesn't matter much, which is why I'm always amazed why people want to spend a lot of time optimizing that. Okay, let's look at Prusa. You'll see here that Prusa estimated the print to take 35 minutes, quite a bit less. In reality, it took 39 minutes and 30 seconds. So while Cura was pretty darn accurate, Prusa underestimated the print time. It underestimated it by about 11.6%. Uh, with startup time, it underestimated by 18%. However, the actual print time for the print using Cura was 48 minutes versus 39 minutes. That's significant. That's a significant difference. And you'll see here that the startup time under Prusa was a little over three minutes. On Cura, it was over seven minutes. So the Prusa startup code is more optimal. Now, what are our initial conclusions? Well, in this case, the actual print time was 18% faster with Prusa. That's a big deal. The total time was 28% faster. That's even a bigger deal. And the Cura estimated print time was 29% longer than Prusa, which is sort of close to these other numbers. So it appears the Estimates are relative to each other, accurate to the actual print experience. So then I thought, wow, when I take and I slice additional models, I should see the same, I don't know, 10 to 20% difference. So I took and I sliced Benji's in Prusa and Cura, and I sliced this large, dense, relatively dense calibration cat that I printed at 300%. And let's see what we can learn from that. You'll see in this picture of this Benji, while there are some travel movements, those are all the blue lines, it's much more plastic than you have in this particular print. And then if you look at the calibration cat, you'll see there's almost no travel time. This is where it gets complicated. In these two cases, the expected times predicted by Cura and Prusa, which once again, we found were relatively accurate. If anything, Cura was right on the button and Prusa underestimated its times, were relatively close. So when you have models with a lot of travel and retraction, the times are quite different. When you have models with little retraction and travel, the times are relatively close. So what can we conclude? So I conclude that at the end of the day, Prusa and Cura are not going to make a big difference in print times for most of your prints. If however, you're printing prints with lots of open spaces and lots of travel, Prusa does have an advantage. In terms of my direct extruder printers, another conclusion is, yes, they're just faster. Well, folks, I hope you found this interesting. You know, to do this topic justice, I really would need to spend hundreds of hours doing tests. And I think I would reach the same conclusion 
that it depends on the print and it depends on the settings you set because once again, 3D printing is an art, not a science. And you have to learn how to optimize your environment. So to continue learning, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell. You want to discuss this or other experiences? Go to forum.drvax.com. Thanks so much for watching and let's continue to learn things together.